everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we've got the latest edition of the Colouring Heaven magazine. This is the World of Princesses special and it's 40 new and exclusive designs from Fabiana Trier. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And as you can see from the front cover, it's going to be filled with beautiful portraits of women and ladies, all princesses from different cultures and uh, ethnicities. So let's have a look at the back you can see we've got a aztec type princess here and uh, as usual you can color the front and the back cover because it's all matte so you can use your pencils or your markers on there so let's open it up have a look inside <coughs> it says that fabiana is an italian artist and a professional illustrator of children's books comics and dvds oh and book covers as well using traditional techniques of ink watercolor pencil and pen as well as digital Fabiana loves to create fantasy and horror illustrations as well as the art you see in this issue. And then we've got all the links to go and see Fabiana's other bits and bobs that she's into. I'm definitely going to have to go and have a look um, if she does horror illustrations because you know what I'm like with my horror. Um, and straight away from the first illustration, you can see that mixture of um, uh, pen pencil and pen and ink as well as digital. So I can tell, for example, on this particular illustration that um, all of this kind of, is it called a fleur-de-lis print? Kind of like a jacquard print is done digitally. I can You can just tell the lines are very crisp. They're kind of perfectly formed and shaped. Um, but as we go through the rest of the book, you will notice there are other sections of each illustration that are definitely hand-drawn. So it is a mixture of both hand-drawn and digital art. So that first one that we looked at was the 15th century princess, that one there. So um, perfectly um, depicted costume there for the 15th century. We've then got the 17th century princess and you can see exactly how much the, uh, the clothing and the fashion had changed over the centuries. We've got some flowers in here as well in the headdress. We've got the ringlet hair and the corset and a digital mandala type piece that you can see decorate in the front there. This is the anchor princess. So you can just tell that this is a completely different ethnicity. You can tell by the facial features and obviously the kind of cultural differences as well with the dress and the headscarf and all of the different things. So they all represent different places, different periods of time. So this is the anchor princess. We've then got the ancient Egyptian princess. This one's lovely. As you can see, we've got all of that Egyptian headdress going on there with all of the kind of jewels and gold and things that you would expect. We've then got the ancient Roman princess. So we've got long swathes of fabric, togas, and um, well, that'd be ancient Greek, wouldn't it? But still, um, we've got this snake bangle around her upper arm, jewelry, bangles, earrings and loads and loads of curls and ringlets in her hair this one is the asian medieval princess so beautiful traditional asian gown i'm not sure what you call these i don't think it's a kimono i think that's chinese or japanese i'm not sure um but it is definitely traditional costume here again with all of the bejeweled um pieces on her head as well We've then got the Aztec princess from the back cover that we've already seen. So loads of this kind of Incan Aztec. They're probably two completely different things, but you know me. Um, <laughs> kind of totem pole looking uh, artwork, which is, again, something completely different. Uh, this is the Berber princess. Now, as you know, and as you can probably tell already from this video, even if you haven't watched my videos before, I'm absolutely crap with anything to do with geography and culture and um you know i really wish i wasn't i do try and I try and learn as much as i can but i always end up fluffing up uh, and this being berber princess i literally don't know what that means the only um <laughs> the only thing i think of when i hear the word berber is the film blades of glory because <laughs> it's one of my favorite films and he says um don't step foot on the berber which is a carpet. So anyway, I digress. I don't know what Berber is, but absolutely beautiful illustration anyway. Um, this is Butterfly Princess. So they're not all gonna be from particular periods of time. Um, this one's just a Butterfly Princess and absolutely beautiful as you can see. Uh, looks like this hair has been done kind of um, hand-drawn. And then you can tell sort of from the eyes and the facial features that there is some digital work as well. 
Charmed Princess. So again, we've got this kind of jacquard. Um, I don't really know what you call this. It's it's kind of it's kind of old, isn't it? You see it on like old wallpaper, like a damask kind of thing, um, like a pattern. Um, and this looks like a younger a younger lady. So this is a princess. Um, we don't really know what what kind of princess she is, but she's charmed anyway. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, crystals and gems and things on this one. Oh, then we've got the one that I've done. It's the Chinese princess. So you probably will have seen this if you follow me on social media. I did post it uh, yesterday, and I finished this with Prismacolor colour pencils and all of this headdress here with the flowers is done in Posca pen. Um, it had a lot of detailed floral work on this headdress and I really did not want to tackle it with pencil because it would have taken an absolute age. So I came up with this kind of watercolour, is it Monet or Manet that uses this sort of dotty technique? Um, I came up with that anyway just to do it really really quickly and Posca pens are absolutely fantastic because you can layer them and they're very opaque so if I do some dark green in an area and it's too much I can layer the light green over it and it will show up. So what I basically did was I took um, the colours that I was wanting to use, so I did the face first and I knew I'd want this kind of um, carmine pink and red in it as well. So what I did was I chose some reds for the red flowers and I chose some purples and pinks because that would go with her kimono, what she's wearing. Um, and then I basically just got two different um, thicknesses of Posca pen at the same colour and just dotted them around, dotted them around and just kept layering it and layering it. And I had a really big kind of paint splash on here um on her on her dress on her jacket thing kimono that's it um and I've tried to cover that as best I can I also had a bit of an accident here with the green and I decided to draw in some flowers just to cover that uh but yes I am really really pleased with how this has turned out I particularly love this skin tone it's not one I don't think that I've used before um I would say it's kind of an Asian skin tone it's a uh, prismacolor cream and sand and deco pink and a bit of blush pink as well so if you're wanting to give that a go and if you want me to do a um like a tutorial of it as well i can do that if you like so i am blithering on let's get on with the book this is dark fantasy princess another one that caught my eye you can see we've got this medusa snakes in the hair type of thing going on loads of pearls and strings of gemstones and things just hanging from her but also this kind of bone looking jewellery as well looks like she's made it out of the bones of her enemies maybe uh, we've then got dragon princess another little girl princess and this kind of wood dragon around her you can tell it's kind of half creature half tree so that's awesome it's just a little bit of little bit of fantasy there for you as well we've got all these flowers in her headdress there is a lot of florals in this book and there is a lot of detail as well so if you do enjoy detail you will enjoy this book this is the edwardian princess and prince so we've actually got a guy in here for a change you don't usually see many males depicted in coloring books but here we go so traditional edwardian garb with the neckerchief and um beautiful sort of soft ringlets in this lady's hair and the gorgeous crowns as well that they're wearing We've got the Indian princess, so she's wearing a sari. I can see this being absolutely stunning in very, very bright, bold colours. And then the Japanese princess. So this is probably a kimono. Um, again, just excuse my complete ignorance. Um, it is not on purpose, believe me. Uh, I'm just, I find it hard to retain information, so I always forget. Um, but absolutely beautiful illustration. Um, they all are, they all are. If you are wanting to practice your skin and hair, like most colouring heavens, th this is a really, really good one. This is the Cayenne Princess. Um, again, I'm not sure what Cayenne is, but I have seen this kind of neck uh, cuff before. It's like coil that's uh, wound around to lengthen the neck. So even though I'm not sure where it's from, I do recognise it. Um, but yes, beautiful. Korean Princess. So I'm not really sure what the Korean style is, um, but it looks very similar to the Chinese and Japanese styles. I'm sure it's different in ways but um yeah again just you've got the background here as well on this one so this almost looks like one of those uh, room dividers that are kind of made out of wood that has been carved with a scroll saw or something in these intricate patterns this is the liberty princess so this kind of does remind me of, of like the statue of liberty type of thing she's holding this scepter here it looks like she's on a huge throne and um 
yeah just just lovely they're all absolutely gorgeous illustrations as you can see this is the macabre princess another one that caught my little gothic eye you can see that she's got spiders in her headdress that looks like a web she's got a little skull, uh, skull lolly there that she's uh she's eating she's got an animal skull as an earring and then we've got a bottle of poison a human skull and flowers that probably have some meaning to this illustration but again not something i'm proficient with uh this is magical princess so another one of those kind of general princesses without too much of a theme uh another young kind of looking lady um, it looks like she has hydrangeas in her hair, this one. This is the Maori princess. So I've learned everything I need to know about Maori, apparently, from the film Moana with my kids. <laughs> so I guess you could do this as a Moana tribute. It's got the beautiful exotic flowers in her hair and the traditional dress. This is the Maasai princess. So the Maasai, to me, I always hear Maasai warrior. So again, I'm not really sure what it is, but... Um, you know what, I could really do with a little bit of a description here just to educate me a little bit, but maybe I'll look at them later on Google and find out for myself. This is a medieval princess. I absolutely love this head headdress thingy. It reminds me of um, in Game of Thrones. What was her name? You'll know, you'll tell me. Uh, <laughs> the really old lady. Uh, brilliant. I can't remember her name now. It's really annoying me. Um, no, you'll tell me in the comments, but you can see she's got her, um, her shield there and it has the crest and the emblem and it's awesome. I love medieval stuff. This is mermaid princess. So underwater one this time, uh, it basically is just a mermaid. She's got a crown on, I guess that's why she's a princess, but that's all it really depicts princess wise. This is the Mexican princess. So beautiful Again, it kind of, it just reminds me of Aztec, but I know it isn't. Um, but it's that kind of pattern, isn't it? Gorgeous flowers in this headdress as well. Then we've got Mongolian princess. I've always wanted to visit Mongolia. It looks absolutely just untouched and perfect and stunning. Um, very flat, isn't it? And there's not a lot going on there, but it just looks so, it looks just so untouched. Gorgeous. Um, so yes, loads and loads of detail in this one. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It looks like some sort of huge um, piece that has gone over her shoulders and down her torso. But again, it's something you could look into if you Google Mongolian princess or Mongolian um, traditional outfits and get your colour ideas from there. This is a Native American princess. So um, yes, we've got all the flowers, the dream catchers, the feathers, feathers, sorry, not flowers. Um, everything you would expect from the Native American princess. Nature princess. So this one is a landscape orientated piece and you can see that it's just full of flowers. It look, They look like lilies, kaya lilies, I think. Um, and her clothing is made up of these huge, big sweeping leaves. Nefertiti princess, so another Egyptian style one. You can see she's got the Egyptian hairless cat sat around her shoulders. We've got scarab beetles. We've got the um, traditional makeup, the kind of Cleopatra makeup. This this weird shaped hat that you always see. I'm sure it's got a name, of course it has, but I do not know it. Um, and I'm loving this um, choker type piece that she's got around her shoulders and neck here of the eagle. The Nigerian princess, so again, another one I can imagine being absolutely filled with a vibrant colour, this headscarf for sure. Um, yeah, just it's really, really interesting to see the traditional wares of all these different cultures and ethnicities. This is the pirate princess, so another really cool one that's caught my eye. We've got the parrot on her shoulder, we've got the pirate flag in the background, and she's got whole handfuls of, um, of jewels and treasure there. Princess of the Dead, so very um, Day of the Dead, uh, Dia de los Muertos, I think you say, in Mexico, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so sugar skulls and lots of pattern going on in the background. And this looks like a big scythe, kind of like death himself. We've got Principessa, which I'm sure is Italian. Um, me being quarter Italian myself, I'm sure that's the Italian word for princess. Um, and yes, I don't think it has any other any other kind of theme to it, apart from being a beautiful illustration. Uh, this is Russian princess. Again, I'm loving these elaborate headdresses, just stunning. Uh, again, loads and loads of jewellery and hanging things. <laughs> We've got the sweet princess. So 
I don't know, are these poppies or sweet peas or something sweet? I don't know, unless that's just, uh, you know, generally what she's called, the sweet princess. Really lovely illustration. They all are. I keep repeating myself. I'm rubbish at doing, <laughs> at doing these um, explaining type reviews. Uh, this is Turkish Princess. I think you can kind of tell. I just love how they've all got a completely different style as well. It's, it just really introduces you to all of these different cultures that, I, well, definitely I don't know much about anyway. This is the Ukrainian princess. How wonderful is this? Just look at all of those flowers and corn stalks and wheat. Just, um, just gorgeous. I love the little plait braids as well. And we've got vampire princess. So this one is all sharp angles and kind of scary lines. <laughs> if you can get a scary line, this she's got antlers on her head. Um, loads and loads of earrings in her ears. You can see she's got the fangs. Love it. And then finally, the Vietnamese princess. So this is quite a large one. It's kind of zoomed in onto her face. You've got loads of loads of practice room there. If you're wanting to figure out where your highlights and shadows and cheekbones and things go, you can practice with this book for sure. It's absolutely wonderful because you're really, well, including the guy in this, you're getting 41 different faces um, and the price is super cheap. It's £5.49. So what's that? You know, it's, it's, I can't, I don't know what it is in US dollars. I'll put it on the screen, but it is so, so cheap to get you know, this much quality artwork. I say this about all the colour in heavens, but it really is such fantastic value to introduce yourself as well to a new artist, a new type of art, a new style. And, you know, even if you only use these colour in heavens as practice books, it really is still a massive bargain. And uh, yes, yeah. so all of the details are going to be in the description of where you can buy this, whether you're a UK resident or anywhere else in the world is available to you. Um, so yes, let me know what you think of this particular issue in the comments below. Don't forget to click the thumbs up and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that's if you want to subscribe after hearing me jabber on. <laughs> and um, I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.